The Road to Baccarat, Book One in the Tales of Tonogato series by Cynthia Radthorne. A soft fizzle was the only sound to be heard within the sleeping chamber. Takamaru went about the room, slowly extinguishing the meditation candles. He had spent the last hour contemplating how best to take advantage of the circumstances that now presented themselves. Things must now be played with great delicacy. Fate had intervened to remove Itachi's overbearing interference from court on this foolish escapade of the pilgrimage. Without the need to counteract that ruffian, he could now employ a more serene approach in his dealings with Camaro, but first he must consider how to make use of his new access as the sovereign's spiritual guide. It had been so easy before, he reflected. Camaro's elder brother, Fujiwari, had been a fool, never more than a child right up until his unfortunate demise. And like a child, it had been so easy to get him to do what one wanted once one knew how to provide the proper reward. Thinking back on those days reminded Takamaru again of how much Hajime she needed him and his guidance, a strong leader with moral conviction, a man who knew the right path better than any of his peers, those somnolent masters who never set foot outside the Deshi Priory. Honestly, how could they expect the Deshi to prosper if they continued to dabble in old scrolls and never looked beyond their own walls? Under his leadership, the order had grown far wealthier. Fortunately, once his influence had seen him elevated to the Council of Ministers, he had been able to build up his own following of supporters, both within the Order and without, and leave that old guard twiddling their thumbs in the dusty shelves of the archive. Yet now things had become more difficult. Kamira was not as easily influenced as Fujiwari, and these last few years had proven troublesome. The time had arrived to become a little more active in influence in the course of events in Hajimeshi. A gentle knock interrupted his thoughts. Come, he said, and the door to the room slid open. A visitor stepped into the dim chamber, and, after closing the door, bowed to Kamaru. The only light that illuminated the two of them came from the few meditation candles that remained lit. Ah, good, said Takamaru. I trust you were able to make the necessary arrangements? Yes, Eminence, replied the man. Takamaru continued around the room. As he touched each candle with his ivory inlaid snuffer, a puff of smoke curling up from where each flame was extinguished. You understand, the sanctity and purity of the deshi is paramount on a journey such as this. This is why such unusual methods must be employed. We must ensure that nothing occurs on this pilgrimage that might tarnish our image among the foreigners. The lazy streamers of smoke drifted up, twisting among the shadows and the rafters. You may be called upon to undertake certain actions for the betterment of our order. Takamu looked penetratingly at his visitor. Do you understand? Your will is my will, Eminence. Takamu gently snuffed another flame out. He had no faith in the Deshi master Toshihito. That fool was too close to Kimura and encouraged these delusions about pilgrimage prophecies. No, he wanted his own man on this pilgrimage, both to stay informed and if the opportunity arose, to rid himself of an obstacle. Whether that obstacle was Itachi or this mythical Kotenshi the pilgrimage was to find, time alone would tell. The Kamaru stopped toward the last of the candles. You will do nothing but observe unless you receive explicit instructions from me. I want to know anything and everything that happens on this expedition. I expect regular reports whenever you are able to utilize our usual means. Speaking quietly, he added, If more active measures are required, I will give word to you. Now go. With a bow in reply, the man departed, leaving the Kamaru alone. He gently quenched the last candle's light before setting aside the snuffer. Excellent, he thought. Everything is going quite well. 